Hello, my name is Seth and I'm a cartoonist. The fault of modern cities is not that they are ugly, but that they are deadly boring. Now don't get me wrong, they are ugly as well. <laughs> but their real crime is that they are bland and homogenous and they stink of committee thinking. Boring cities produce boring citizens. In interesting cities, at least one hopes, the population aspires to live up to their environment. For me, the question of how to make a city vibrant comes down to the simple matter of aesthetics. Perhaps I'm shallow, but I like the surface of things. I'm interested in the way things look. And if I'm known for anything at all, it's for living in the past, or at least for making a valiant effort to live in the past. So please forgive me if my aesthetics are not your aesthetics. My thinking has been shaped by far too much looking in the rear view mirror. But acknowledging this bias, I ask a question. Do North American cities look as interesting as they used to? Do they look better today or worse? More interesting or less interesting? I suspect you can guess my answer. Even if you disagree with me, could they be more beautiful? Could they be more interesting, more eccentric in their choices? Why are our cities becoming so increasingly bland? They could look any way we wish them to. We build them. They don't just grow out of the earth fully formed. For me, what makes a big city exciting is the sense of mystery it contains. The fact that you can never really know all of it. Even after 20 years of living in Toronto, I was often surprised to turn a corner and discover something I hadn't seen before. This is not the same in a town or even in a small city. You need a big city for this. I find I am less surprised each year by what I find around the corner. I like those surprises. Those surprises are to be encouraged. Anything that makes a place more interesting is to be encouraged. In my 20s, when I first started to realize that I disliked the design of the modern era, I, I reckoned that much of what was going on around me was being done by people with bad taste or no taste. Good taste, of course, was my taste. <laughs> Bad taste was the enemy. However, as I've grown older, I've come to recognize, if somewhat slowly, that much of what I like about the past had originally been considered ugly or vulgar or simply in bad taste in its own time. And only with the patina of age or tradition did they acquire the charm with which we view them today. Here are just a few quick examples. These buildings were probably considered somewhat gaudy or cheap or corny in their day, and most definitely lacking in good taste. They may still be seen as kitsch by a lot of people. The taste makers of the world would have banished them back then, which would have been a real shame. It turns out surprisingly that good taste is the enemy and not bad taste after all. Good taste is inherently conservative. I could go on for some time about what I consider interesting in a city, but since I must be brief, I will focus on signage. I love old signs, and nothing more obviously brings the urban environment to vibrant life than unique signage. Here are a few random examples from my favorite era. This kind of spectacle was everywhere in the mid 20th century, but it's pretty much vanished by the time I was an adult. Back in my youth, I often complained about the dearth of eye-catching signage being made today. I figured it was all just the result of cheapskates with poor imagination, or the lingering presence of Swiss design, or the cult of Helvetica. <laughs> that is, until I tried to put up a sign. When my wife opened up her barber shop a few years ago in Guelph, Ontario, this is the sign I wanted to make for her. After some enlightening discussions about signage laws in our city, this is what we ended up with. I was amazed to find out that you couldn't even have a sign that rose above the roof line of a shop. I won't bore you with the irritating details of how little of a facade you are currently allowed to obscure with signage. Needless to say, I found this discouraging. 
and I acquired a slightly better insight into why our city is covered in bland plastic signage that all looks the same. Good luck getting any of those spectacular signs of the past installed today. <laughs> Regulations lead to blandness. I have no doubt that regulation prevents the most egregious of eyesores, but by erring on the side of caution, it also keeps out that which makes the world most interesting. Perhaps it is not tastemakers any longer that wish to banish, banish bad taste. Perhaps it's bureaucrats or urban planners or community groups. I don't know. Maybe they don't even think about taste, just keeping the machine running smoothly. I probably don't even really know what I'm talking about here. I'm a cartoonist, not an architect or an engineer or a city councillor. I do suspect, though, that too much caution leads to blandness. I can only imagine the red tape involved in trying to change any of this. I won't be lobbying anyone about it. I'm not investigating bylaws or how to change them. I will be doing nothing. I plan to continue living in my comfortable dream world of poorly researched opinions. <laughs> I'm not, honestly not even sure how to encourage eccentricity and an indiv individualism in the modern city. That's difficult. But I do know how to squash it. Persnickety rules that exist primarily, sorry about this, that exist primarily to keep everything neat and tidy. Attitudes about taste that banish risk and vulgarity for the blandness of consensus. Not in my backyard thinking. I don't want to get all libertarian sounding here, but somehow for a city to be beautiful, interesting, and a place of surprising images, you need a kind of wild west frontier of design. Looking again at that proposed sign for my wife's barber shop, I have to admit that it would never have been that big. Maybe a quarter of that size. Even then, I have to say, it would likely have collapsed the roof and crushed the building. <laughs> Safety is the issue I have conveniently sidestepped in this talk. But that said, if we want cities to be more vibrant and beautiful and unique, if we want to live in exciting, interesting looking cities, perhaps we will have to take the risk that occasionally something or somebody will get crushed. Thank you. <laughs>